Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before but this is my first review from them in about six months. I just haven't seen new beers coming through Sistembolaget from these guys. But they are a very good brewery in my experience. They're particularly revered at the moment for their New England hazy type IPAs and it's another example of those that we have today. So for this one then we are going to head to Urubro, which is out to the west of Stockholm, and go a little bit north to a wee town called Nura. And we're having a look at yet another beer from Apex Brewing Company. So this one is called the Tender Abuse. It's a double IPA coming in at 8% ABV, and fingers crossed this turns out to be another very, very nice beer. So um, yeah, really, really curious to see how this one turns out. This is one of two Apex beers that I bought through Glass Banking recently. Um, as I've told you before, Glass Banking is a very, very good service they've got a really good selection of beers these days but it is a little bit pricey actually I bought this one along with a couple of other beers on uh, Black Friday because there was free postage basically so yeah if you compare what you would pay on glass banking which I think it was 90 kroners for this it was 80 or 90 kroners that I paid for this you would actually pay about 50 kroners through Sistembo Lager for this beer maybe 55 so yeah there is quite a considerable uh, markup when it comes to uh, the beers through glass bank and they've got to make their profit obviously but yeah you're paying a bit more than Danish prices for the beers through there so um, yeah you kind of just need to, to choose what you want do you want to wait a little and get the same beer through System Bolaget for cheaper later or do you want the beer right now I mean it's, it's your kind of personal choice but as I say glass bank and they've got a very good service there albeit I do find it a little touch expensive to be honest with you but when it was Black Friday they had a couple of Apex I got a couple of Apex beers and a few other things and uh, you know the, the one of the main reasons behind getting uh, the order was that I wanted to have a few more Apex beers because it had been a very long time actually so fingers crossed Apex gets some more beers out through System Bolaget quite soon I have been missing their new stuff but you know in the meantime hopefully this is a good one and I hope that you enjoy these two Apex reviews that you're going to see across December so um, yeah let's go for it with this one then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Apex Brewing Company before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future. I think this is review number 10 or so that I've done from them but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the sweet Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and that is constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you guys show the channel is massively, massively appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Apex Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Apex Brewing, as I've told you already, are based in Nora, which is to the north of Urebro, out to the west of Stockholm. And this company was founded back in 2017 by Daniel Gatchitz and Nicholas Lundgren. Both of these guys are musicians. Nicholas played in the band 59 Times the Pain and Daniel played in The Voice of a Generation. And uh, both of them are responsible for the brewing operations, but there are also a few others involved in the company as well that are dealing with various other things. This is Leif Carlson, Ola Eriksson and Roger Hjelm. So they started off with a 500 litre brew kit and six fermentation tanks and they were selling their beers in the local area before getting them into the local system Bolaget. Uh, they continued to grow over the next little while and then in 2018 they brewed a total of around 35,000 litres of beer uh, throughout the year and they produced around 25 different varieties, all of which uh, were IPAs and that's the style that these guys mainly stick to at the moment. Um, over the course of 2019 they managed to get their brewing up to about 100,000 litres of beer and I think they were planning to take the, the volume up once again uh, beyond that uh, throughout 2020 but whether they've done that or not I'm not sure you know the whole COVID-19 situation has put the world into chaos so we're not quite sure but uh, as of December 2020 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 50 different kinds of beer so um, yeah it's pretty impressive actually like I say if you're interested in the New England hazy IPAs this is a brewery that I would always recommend that you check out they are one of the best IPA producers in Sweden the other one that I would recommend that is really up and coming at the moment would be Ten Hands who are from Karlstad 
um, a little bit further west. So um, yeah, Apex and Karlstad are probably two of the best smaller uh, IPA producers in Sweden at the moment. You know, Dugis are doing some really interesting things, Stig Bjergis and OO of course, and you know, there's various other uh, breweries doing these kind of things as well. Um, Brewski of course are still very good when it comes to the the New England hazies these days as well, but we are starting to see a re-diversification of the IPA category at the moment. I think there's more West Coasts, there's more Black IPAs, some Rye IPAs and Red IPAs and stuff like that coming out, and I do hope that continues. I would love to see Apex producing um, a proper West Coast, you know, high bitter West Coast um, IPA. I think that would be very, very nice. But um, yeah. Um, that's all I can really tell you about Apex Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's get on to the tasting part of the video and actually have a taste of this one then. I'm very, very curious about this beer. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. There you can see the standard Apex Brewing artwork, which is very, very nice, almost, you know, a little bit of Illuminati shapes, lots of prisms and things like that, the pyramids, um, the cross upside down, it's always a good thing. But, um, yeah, there you can see Tender Abuse Double IPA, 8% New England IPA, this one, New England Double IPA, I should say. The stats I have on this beer, it says here, this one, it's hopped with Citra, Victoria's Secret, Nelson Sovian and Simcoe. We know these hops quite well. Citra, lots of nice juicy mangoes, about 14% alpha acid, few complexities as well. Victoria's Secret's about 12%. The little brother or little sister, however you want to say, of Galaxy, you know, lots of passion fruit, pineapple, things like that. Nelson Sovine, New Zealand Beast, you know, 16% alpha acid, white green grapes, love that hop. And Simcoe, as we know, is a lovely soft, um, passion fruity one when it comes to um, when it comes to New England IPs, usually about 12% alpha acid. The malt base in this one is Maris Otter pa Extra Pale from England, Naked Oats, Flaked Oats and some wheat, and this one uses a WLP 66 London Fog Yeast. So pretty impressive, um, you know, pretty impressive ingredients used in this one, and knowing Apex Brewing Company, I think this beer will be pretty damn good actually. So um, yeah, curious to see how this one turns out. Nicely presented, 440 milliliter can. So let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste. And then my first Apex beer in about six months or so. So um, yeah. Also with the name of this one, Tender Abuse, I would like to dedicate this one to my uh, my my sexy boys, Harry at Blue Nose Beer Reviews and um, Thomas Hoondam at Thomas Opent. You know there was a certain YouTuber who <laughs> tried to say that um, Harry and I. Um, we're in, the, we're in a relationship together, so you know I'm going to dedicate this one, the tender abuse, because that's that's how Harry and, and uh, Thomas and I all feel about each other. We'll dedicate this one to them, to my uh, my my gay friends. You know, we'll do it like that, um, just because it's funny. You know, this <laughs> that whole that whole episode was just quite funny. How it's, you know, oh, we won't go too much into that. But I should also give a shout out in this video as well to my friend Ricard from over at Glass. He's from Urubro, um, so very close to. Um, to um to Apex actually so um yeah you definitely need to um to look at some of his videos as well very very nice guy and you will see him on the live streams again on the channel um very very soon so um yeah cool stuff always nice to give Ricardo a mention so um yeah as you can see with this beer and as you would expect with it being a New England uh, double IPA. It's poured a lovely, kind of bright, hazy one. This this is a more kind of pale-leaning New England double IPA. Remember, the colour of your beers depends on the uh, length of the boil um, and also the types of malts that are used. The longer you boil the beer, the darker the colour gets. But this is a lovely, lovely looking beer. It looks like a sort of combination of a mango and pineapple juice, something like that. Um, but you can see when we poured the beer, there was about a third finger of a frothy white head. Um, Nice, um, it's faded away to be a very kind of thin foamy layer, but there is a nice little bit of a foamy ring around the edge of the glass there. But yeah, quite a pale, um, yellowy leaning one this. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look pretty nice. This isn't the haziest of New England IPAs you're going to find, or New England doubles at 8% ABV. You will find ones that are a little bit more kind of soupy and gloopy compared to this one. But um, yeah, overall, it does look um, pretty damn nice, I have to say. Uh, and I think this is is one of the less hazy ones I've seen from Apex as well. But knowing this brewery, there will be a reason for that. They tinker the recipes depending on what hops they want to use. I'd, I'd love to know what their methodology is when they're actually deciding to brew a new IPA. 
what exactly do they change? You know, I'd love to kind of I'd love to go up and actually do an interview with these guys and talk to them about it because as I say they're a kind of specialist IPA brewery and I've always wondered with that at a point when you're not brewing so many different styles how what variable is it you choose to change in the beers do you know do they choose a hot profile and say we want to go with this how do we make the malts match or do they choose a malt uh, do they play with the malt base and then say oh what hops would go well with this you know I'd be curious to know what their methodology is especially when they're so specialized in one style but um, yeah interesting stuff well hopefully we can go and visit these guys at some point I'll need to see if I can organize that once the whole pandemic thing buggers off but um, yeah let's have a taste of this one then and see how we got on the tender abuse double IPA 8% ABV Citra uh, Victoria's Secret Nelson Sovine and Simcoe in this one should be pretty nice let's get stuck in it Slanger, Skull cheers shout out to Ricard and my babes Thomas and Harry cheers Oh yeah, that's very very nice. Um, it's almost a little bit nostalgic, as I said, six months since I tried an Apex beer, and it just it feels like drinking this beer comes across as all as almost just a little bit more nostalgic. I mean, these Apex beers are very very soft, um, and the you know the the malty side of these beers are all I always remember them being very very soft. And that's what I really, really liked about them. You know, for 8% ABV, these things are stupidly drinkable. Um, but that's why we love Apex. And I'll say straight away, this is another um, lovely, lovely beer. Is it my favourite one I've had from them? It's a bit difficult to say because, you know, it's been, as I, as I say, it has been quite a while. Um, and really when it comes to these beers, but with this brewery you know that you're going to get a good IPA. It really just comes down to what um, fruits and hops and things that you, you like out of these. Um, you know, there's um, there's a lot of really good hops out there these days. Um, and this one, and you know, the hops in this one are ones that we've had before. So I think overall it's fair to say that this beer is a really um, kind of soft, tropical leaning uh, New England IPA. I have had ones from Apex that are a little bit more kind of bitey. Um, I have had ones that are a little bit more kind of um, juicy, you know, the fruit kind of comes out a little bit more. I have had ones that are a bit more kind of zesty as well. So that that is the thing is, you know, I think it's it's a bit of a double-edged sword in some ways when it comes to the, um, uh, when it, you know, when it comes to the, you know, sticking to one style, you know, you can experiment within that style quite a lot actually. And these guys really do show the, the kind of versatility that you have within the New England IPA style. But at the same time, for drinkers like me, it's kind of you forget exactly which um, which beer you like best and stuff. But you know, if they're always experimenting and producing new stuff, that's that's a good thing as well. You know. But yeah, that is very very nice. It's definitely. I would describe this one as being one of the more kind of soft and sort of smooth um, IPAs that I remember. Having from Apex, you will find ones that are more bitey, like I say, and a bit more kind of zesty and things. Um, but yeah, it's solid. It's solid once again. I'm curious to see how the other one turns out now. Um, so yeah, let's um, break down that flavour profile for you a little bit then. So straight away with this beer, you get a nice kind of smooth white bready quality in there. There is a bit of a kind of grainy bread crusty thing as well, which is... Um, which is quite good. Um, in the middle of your palate, you you can feel some of the oaty smoothness there. But I really I don't find the oats don't come across as being overly creamy in this beer. I think maybe this is a little bit more of a yeasty leaning IPA. In fairness, yeah, I think if you go towards, you can feel that soft sort of. The Maris Otter, I think, is the base malt in this. You can really feel that Maris Otter extra pale that's in here. That's forming the backbone of the beer. If you go towards the back third of your palate, you can get that slightly more bitey, wheaty note to the to the beer, but it's not overly pungent in my mind. Um, the malt base of this one, it doesn't have really thicker... It's actually quite... I don't want to say thin because you, can, you, you would think of that word negatively, but the malt base doesn't feel overly thick and creamy. And this one actually it comes across as more like a sort of crisp malt base in a sense. So yeah, if you go towards the back third of your palate, you get a little bit more crispness out of this one. Um, as you move, if you move further forward on that, you get a nice little bit of 
wheaty smoothness in there, and then on the um, in the middle third of your palate, you've got you've still got that sort of more you've got a bit of a softer white bready note in there, which I think the oats are contributing to. But you can feel that nice smooth oaty character in the very um, centre of the palate as well. You'll maybe get just a little bit of a biscuity hint coming out of the beer too, in fairness. But yeah, it's quite a, to me the malt base in this one is quite crisp. Yeah, I think the Maris Otter really gives you. Um, really gives you a nice kind of almost slight crispness um, to the beer. Not crisp in the way that you get from Pilsner malt, but just like a sort of soft and um, white bready character. But yeah, the oaty notes out of this, uh, the oaty notes that come out of this are um, are very, very nice. Um, the, the I think this one the oats come out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste. And as I say, you get you get a wee tiny bit of a slightly Werther's original brown sugar, almost biscuity thing, in the middle of your palate there. But the malt base is very straightforward in this one, and definitely not the thickest and creamiest of malt bases you're going to find from Apex, from what I can remember. But on the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate you have got a little bit of earthiness there, but not too much. As you move further forward along the sides of the palate, you really get. You get a nice little bit of floral aromaticity out of this one, but it's not over, uh, overtly um, kind of spicy or, or aromatic or anything. It's quite a nice kind of subtle note that you get out of this beer. But as you go round the front curve of the tongue, the beer is just a little bit lighter and grassy in that sense. And then on the front third of your palate, you've got a nice kind of juicy, fruity sort of thing. Uh, that comes out of the beer as you always get. You know, you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. Um, so let's look at the fruity side of the beer then, because I think this is where most of the complexity is in this one, in fairness. Yeah. So if you go towards the back of that front third of your palate, there is a wee bit of that stronger passion fruity note in there. As you move further forward from that, you have, um, yeah, as you move further forward from that, you have um, the softer, you know, I think Victoria's Secret and Citra are both going to contribute to that. Um, passion fruit Simcoe will as well, in fairness, but in the New England IPAs, remember, Simcoe gives you, it shows you its softer side. If it's in a West Coast IPA, more caramelly malt base, it's more oily. You put it in a black IPA, it's got lovely red fruity characters. So, yeah. There is quite a bit of a passion fruity note to this one, but then as you reach the kind of middle part of that front third of your tongue, it does have a softer kind of mangoey note as well. But I think the front, um, to be honest with you, I think the front half almost of that front third of your tongue, it's white green grape, you know, that white green grapey, almost gooseberry like thing that you would expect of um, uh, Nelson Sovine that really, really comes out on this one. Um, it's quite. It's a really interesting beer, this one, and I, I certainly like how um, how this beer goes together in that sense. I like the fact that the Nelson Sovine is quite prominent in this one. You don't come across too many. I, I, I'd love. I don't think I've ever had a New England IPA where it's been only Nelson Sovine. And that's one thing I would love to see Apex do. If they would, if these guys would do like a, a single hop series. You know, kind of like what OO do with the 100s, and I guess you've got the 50-50s from OO as well. It would be really cool to see um, Apex do a single hop series, and you know, people can use that as hop education, if you like, because there's lots of hops out there that you could highlight. You know, um, you've got things from Slovenia, like the Styrian Wolf is a beautiful hop. You've got Nelson Sovine in here. You've got Enigma from Australia. Talis is a new one that's coming out that's quite interesting. Uh, you know, Idaho 7. You've got all of these kind of things out there. Um, so yeah, I would love to see Apex do uh, to do doing something like this, um, but this one for me, I like the fact that the Nelson Sovine is a little bit more prominent, and you, it's almost that like the on the front half of that front third of your tongue, you've got the Nelson Sovine, and then behind that, you've got the other hops in there, because the other ones, um, they also have a wee bit of, um, they, their characters are fairly similar in a lot of ways. You can feel a little bit of mango, I think, coming out of this beer, and that'll be the Citra, to be honest. But I think you get the passion fruit that's in here at the back of that front third of your palate, it's got a little bit of pungency to it, but it softens up as you come further forward, and I think on the very kind of tip of the tongue, you do get a wee touch of a slightly limey character, which I think, again, will be Citra. Citra can give you some of those lemon limey notes, but um, this is just a lovely, lovely IPA once again from Apex Brewing, and I'm not really surprised at this, to be quite honest with you. These guys are a very, very capable brewery, and um, 
I always enjoy reviewing their beers, but this one does strike me as being one of the, the kind of lighter and almost crisper, um, crisper variants that I've had from them. So on that note, I think we should move on to the mouthfeel. I think we've discovered, we, we've discussed the the flavour profile of this beer quite well. So mouthfeel wise, um, so. Mouthfeel wise, yeah, I would say that this one is kind of top end and mid bodied. I think it's around there. The beer does have a degree of slickness to it, it's got a wee bit of crispness. There's a wee touch of a kind of oily, uh, there's a wee touch of a sort of oily mouthfeel to it, which I think is um, it's really nice and it is, it's nice. Uh, I think that suits the, the beer, but it's, it's the malt base, as I say, a wee touch of sweetness, nice smoothness, and a bit of slickness in there as well. You've got a lot of juicy, fruity character to this one. As I say, I think it's got a wee bit more oiliness from the, the kind of gooseberries, white grapey notes from the Nelson Sovian and the other fruits that are in this, from the other three hops, the citra, the, the citra, the um the citra, Victoria's Secret and the Simcoe in this one, they're all giving you a few more kind of juicy elements to it. But um yeah, in terms of hoppy bitterness, this is a fairly standard, I think this is about 30 IBUs, maybe 40 since it's a double IPA. Um, it's fairly standard in terms of its bitterness. Um, malt base, like I said, quite smooth, easy going, and then you've got a nice juicy, fruity character coming out of this beer as well. But overall, this is a really, really nice beer. This one, and I like how um, I like how it goes together. So it gets a big thumbs up from me. Actually, um, tender abuse double IPA. One of the one of the kind of crisper, I think, um, and slightly lighter malty IPAs that I've had from Apex. And you will, as I say, you will find more wheaty and bitey ones. You'll find more kind of oaty, creamy ones. You will find ones that are a bit more kind of zesty and bitter and stuff like that. But yeah, this one is very nice and very smooth and quite drinkable in my mind. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. The Tender Abuse Double IPA, 8% ABV, Citra, um, Citra, Victoria's Secret, Nelson Sovine and Simcoe in this one. And another lovely double IPA from Apex Brewing Company in Nora, just to the north of Örebro, in uh, kind of in the middle of Sweden, almost actually about a third of the way up Sweden. So um, yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Apex Brewing. We will return to these guys very soon, and uh, yeah, you will see another. A double IPA from these guys within the next kind of week or two, something like that. But yeah, check out this one if you get the chance, and hopefully we see more Apex beers coming through C Stimble Agate next year in 2021. Slange Skull, cheers, and thanks for watching. Do make sure you check out Ricard Thomas and uh, and Harry on their channels. Cheers.